You're all gonna hate me for this one. Just because you can draw circles in Figma doesn't mean you should. I'm gonna show you five features you should stop using in Figma and what to replace them with instead. The first tool I wanna to talk about is the line tool. Typically when we place lines in documents, we associate them with dividing lines or as strokes or even potentially shadows. The problem is that when we're placing lines in a document, we often get things that are decimals on the width, sometimes being decimals on the X and the Y value. And lines don't really exist like that in web development, unless of course you're gonna be making a one pixel div and giving it a color. One of the other problems is that you can't really give it a fill. We can add a fill, and if we zoom in, we can check, but nothing really happens. We could even change it to red, just to make sure it works, but still nothing. If there's a stroke on there, you can add another stroke if you want, but the problem is you can't really stack them. All you can do is continue to add a wider and wider stroke. And adjusting the lines is really difficult. When you start to have a lot of auto layout items and you have a dividing line in them, selecting those can be difficult because the selection area is only one pixel tall. So instead, what you should replace it with is a rectangle that is only one pixel tall. And I'll show you why. One of the reasons is that it's a lot easier to round a rectangle than it is to round a line. I'm gonna show you that now. All I have to do is add a 20 pixel border radius to this rectangle. Whereas with a line, I have to go into the line tool, select which particular arrow end I want, and make sure that it's on both of them. It's an extra four clicks that you don't need. One of the other reasons to choose a rectangle over a line is that the rectangle snaps to whole numbers, whereas the line often snaps to decimal points. As you can see, by dragging each of these points, we're ending up on a number that doesn't technically exist on a screen. Whole pixels or nothing. Lastly, on a rectangle, you can actually add a fill. You can add multiple fills. You can add gradients. And you can even add more strokes. Inside and outside. The second feature you should stop using is the hand tool. And yes, it's actually called the hand tool. It can be found up here in the toolbar. I've seen people click this just to drag around on the canvas. And one of the problems is that it requires a click in order to get to, and you have to hit escape in order to get out of it or go to another tool. And that's two extra clicks you don't need to be doing. Unlike the hand tool, other tools can be escaped simply by using them and then finishing up. Instead of using the hand tool in the future by clicking it, simply hold spacebar, click and drag, and then let go. You enter into a temporary mode where all you're doing is clicking and dragging on the canvas. For trackpad users, you don't really need to do this since two finger swipe will do it. For trackpad users, you don't really have to do this since you can use your two fingers to swipe around. The third feature you should stop using is the pencil tool. It's a tool that can be found both in Figma and in FigJam, and you can use it to draw really simple drawings. The problem is that it's imprecise, and drawing with a mouse or a trackpad is really difficult. Style is excluded. If you have one of those, you should still consider not using it. Let's say you wanted to draw a simple shape, like a square, or even a circle. Maybe you want to draw a triangle instead of a shape, just to give it that hand-drawn feel. The problem is that it looks cheap. The other issue is that it's not a closed shape. So if I wanted to add a fill to these, I would have to close them manually with the path tool, creating extra work for myself. If I try to add a fill, nothing happens. And if I try to reverse the stroke, same thing, because they're not closed paths. Really, there's no true replacement for the pencil tool in Figma, except using the pen tool and learning to get good with Bezier curves, or drawing on an iPad with an Apple Pencil or consider not using it at all and drawing your thing on paper and then scanning it and using the pen tool by getting good with the Bezier curves. You'll probably find better results that way anyway and a more real hand-drawn look. The fourth feature you should stop using is the layer list itself. It can be hard to find specific layers with names or the icons in the layer name. Like this is features, frame 69, frame 95, frame 71, container. And when you have this many frames that are nested this deep, it can be hard to find the right frame that you want. Everything you need is already on the canvas anyways. And drilling down into layers takes time with nested groups and frames. Sometimes we can find ourselves 20 layers deep. What I want you to do instead is hide the layer list. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command Shift Backslash. If you're on Windows, that's Control Shift Backslash. I know it can be really daunting at first, but I want you to get used to this. It's gonna save you a whole lot of room on the canvas and you're gonna be a lot faster for it. You're probably wondering how you're going to drill down into layers now, but it's really simple. All you have to do is hold Command, or for Windows users, Control, and click on what you need. And if you need to go up a layer, you hit Shift-Enter. Go down a layer, Enter. 
Just by getting used to those two, going up a layer and going down a layer, you can select things a lot faster. Let's say I wanted to select every single feature within these card sets. I'm going to start by double clicking in the layer, and I've instantly selected all of them together, but I want to select them individually. All I have to do is press enter, and I've selected each one. Enter one more time, and we selected the contents inside. If we hit shift enter, we go up, and we select everything on the canvas. Even easier is layer traversal to the next item. If I hit command click, if I deep select this item, and I hit tab, it'll go to the next item in the layer list. I'm gonna open the layers so we can see that. I have this layer selected, and by hitting tab, I go to the next item in the list. Shift tab does the reverse. So it's just like enter, where we're going down a layer and we're going up a layer. Now, I know what you might be thinking. If you've hidden a layer and you wanna find it in the layer list, how are you gonna do that? You can't see it, so how can you click it? If we look in the layer list, this layer is hidden. And if I hide it and I unselect it, there's no way to know it's even there, except in outline mode. If I hit Command Y to go to outline mode, you can see it's still there. And I can select one of those items and using those new shortcuts we just learned, shift enter a couple times, and we've selected the whole parent and we can unhide it again, just like that. And the last feature, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this one, but stop using circles. The problem is that once you draw a circle, it's always a circle. If I draw a circle on the canvas, it's a circle, no problem. If I draw a square on the canvas, it's just a square. But the thing is, I can turn it into a circle. I'm gonna use a really high border radius, 9999, to make it a circle. That way it's always a circle, no matter what. Once you draw a circle, it's always a circle. And how often do you really see people draw ovals? One of the features that you can't get anywhere else with the circle is the arc tool. The problem is that it's imprecise, and I would rather you use Boolean operations like subtract to find the shape that you want. Instead, what we're gonna do is draw a square here next to the circle, and we're gonna give a border radius of 9999. That way it's as high as it can go, no matter the size that we choose. It's always going to be a circle. And we're gonna take both of them, and we're gonna fill them with an image. Instead of a circle, I want you to start using squares, and I'll show you why. First, I'm gonna draw a circle, and then next to it, I'm gonna draw a square, and I'm gonna fill both of them with the same image. This is something that you might find in a profile design, where it shows the avatar in a circle, or the avatar in a square. And I'm gonna set the square to 9999. That way, no matter what size we scale it to, it's always going to be a circle. Now let's say we get farther in the design, and you like it, but you haven't decided if you wanna use a circle or not. The problem is that you've used a circle everywhere for the avatar, whereas if you used a square, and you're using components, or using shared styles, you can lower this to whatever number you want. So maybe we just want a rounded rectangle, or maybe we want a little higher, or maybe we change it back to a circle altogether. You can go from a square to a circle and back, but you can't go from a circle to anything else. One other tip for when you're doing the square to circle change, constrain the proportions. That way when you go to change the size, it's always going to be a circle instead of a random rectangle. Just because these tools exist doesn't mean you should use them. I want you to stop using these in the next week and see how much faster you get. And just to recap, the five features you should stop using are the line tool, replace it with a rectangle, the hand tool, stop clicking on the hand tool, stop using the shortcut and just hold spacebar. The pencil tool, it's imprecise, it's messy, you can't even use a fill. Just stop using it altogether. Scan something from paper and use the pen tool instead, the layer list or the left panel. Just start hiding it. You can use shortcuts to dive into layers, go up a layer, go down a layer, go to the next layer, and even find hidden layers by going into outline mode. And lastly, probably the most hated one, circles. Stop using circles altogether and try using squares next time. See what happens. You're gonna love being able to flip-flop between the circle and the square, and you'll never go back. And remember, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if this works for you.